Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and today I'm going to be recommending some summer reads. So if you're a mood reader like me, summer might put you in the mood for a very specific type of book. For me, that's typically a very light, very fluffy contemporary, but recently for some reason I found myself drawn to fantasy books, so that's what I've been reading. And I did a poll on Instagram to see if you guys would want to see a summer recommendations video featuring contemporaries or featuring fantasy, and it was almost exactly Exactly even I think I want to say it was between five and ten votes so it was very close so I just decided to include both in this video because contemporaries are obviously what most people typically think of when they think of a summer read but fantasy is what I personally have been drawn to recently and something a little bit different so I'm going to start off with the fantasies I have four different fantasy books to tell you guys about today and if you're just looking for the contemporary recommendations you can skip to the time that is currently displayed on the screen that is when I start talking about the contemporary books that you see in the thumbnails. So I chose fantasy books that were a little bit on the lighter side, maybe that were very adventurous and had lots of action and were just so much fun. So the first book I will be telling you guys about today is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. I like to describe this book as a dark little mermaid retelling. It features a girl named Lyra who is a siren and who is known as the Prince's Bane because every year on her birthday she steals the heart of a prince and by that I mean literally takes the heart out of their body and kills them. But her mom is is the vicious queen of the sea and punishes her ruthlessly for different things that she's done and she finds herself suddenly on land having to capture the heart of one last prince. But things get complicated when Lyra starts developing feelings for this prince and when they go on this epic adventure across the country. So this book was so much fun. I loved it so much. It is a standalone fantasy which if you know YA you know those are very rare and hard to find and if you do find one they tend not to be as good as series are just because of the world building required in such a short amount of time. But I think Alexandra Cristo did such a good job with the world building in her book. I loved all of her characters so so much and loved everything about this book. So you should definitely check it out. It has a very under the sea feel so that makes it even better if you're planning on heading to the beach and want a nice fun fantasy to read. So highly highly recommend this book for the summer. The next book I have is Furyborn by Claire Legrand. So this tells the story of Riel and Eliana, two girls who live a thousand years apart and who are destined to become two different queens. One is going to become the Sun Queen and one is going to become the Blood Queen and it's their journey to finding out which is which and to discovering their own powers. So this book was so so good. Lots of adventure, lots of action, lots of awesome awesome characters and jumping through time is something that I think is definitely hard to do and Claire Legrand did such a fantastic job of that. This is a pretty bulky book and it is a series so just know that when you're going into this but it was awesome. Highly recommend and it's beautiful. It has a gorgeous cover. The colors definitely remind me of summer. That's not why I'm recommending it. I'm recommending it because of the adventurous aspect of it and just how much fun I personally had reading this but the colors would definitely be perfect for some summer inspired bookstagram photos so you should definitely check this one out it was so so good and the next summer fantasy recommendation I have is Heart of Iron by Ashley Pawson so this is essentially an Anastasia retelling set in space so this book was full of adventure and so many narrow escapes that had me on the edge of my seat I tend to think of summer as a time for road trips as a time for adventuring and for wandering new places and this book definitely captures that sense of adventure and that sense of exploration and I loved it so so much. I loved Ashley Paulson's other book. I actually am going to be recommending it in the contemporary section of this video so Ashley Paulson is definitely a summer book writer. And then the final book in the fantasy section of this recommendations video is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This book is kind of like a superhero story featuring a hero side and a villain side and lots of characters with special powers. This book I'm recommending because it was so much fun. I personally loved getting to explore this world so so much and seeing all the different powers. I didn't love this book as a whole. I felt like it didn't have as much action as it needed to but in terms of fantasy it is definitely on the lighter side. It's just very fun and kind of fluffy which isn't a word I use a lot to describe fantasies and again beautiful beautiful cover. I absolutely cannot wait for the second book in this series and yeah it's definitely fantastic if you're looking for a light fantasy. And now on to the contemporary section of today's video. This is definitely going to be the easier portion 
portion because contemporaries are very much associated as I mentioned with summer to start with so the reasons I have picking these books are going to be much more clear than just my intuition told me if I hadn't read these books yet this is what I would pick up this summer so Without further ado, let's get into this. The first book on my list of summer contemporary recommendations is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This tells the story of a boy Tanner who is bisexual and lives in a Mormon, very conservative town who he hasn't come out to yet. He's come out to his parents and his family is very, very supportive of his sexuality. But the Mormon faith, I don't know very much about that religion, but apparently they aren't super accepting of LGBT identities. So Tanner is a little bit nervous about what would happen if he were to come out to the rest of his town but then he meets this boy Sebastian who is actually the preacher's son in the town and it's their story getting to know each other and inevitably falling in love it was so cute it was so much fun it's definitely something that has a little bit more substance and a little bit more of an emotional punch behind it but I loved every minute of it. It made me so happy. It was so adorable and Tanner and Sebastian were just so cute and I loved them so much. The characters in this book were so fleshed out and complex and I loved how they were crafted. Literally everything about this book was fantastic and the cover is super summery. Again, that's coincidence, I swear. I didn't choose these books based on the covers but it definitely had a perfect balance of being something lighter and also having a deeper meaning behind it and so I think if you're looking for something maybe a little bit on the heavy your side you know you've read all the fluffy contemporaries you can and want something with a little bit more of an emotional background this is definitely the one to go for the next book on my list is Geekerella by Ashley Poston so this is about a girl who is obsessed with this particular fandom called Starfield and she enters a cosplay contest for this fandom and ends up meeting the actor who plays the main guy in the movie adaptation of her favorite series so it's their love story and it was so cute it's what every fangirl wishes for and dreams about and it was so adorable and so so good. I read it so quickly and it's now in paperback too so if you're looking for something a little bit on the less expensive side you can now get this book in paperback as well. It has a slightly different cover but it's just as beautiful. This book I'm obsessed with it and it's been so long since I've read it but I love it. And this is definitely a lighter and fluffier book. For sure. The next book I'll be recommending today is something a little bit different and that is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. So I know a lot of times when you think of summer contemporaries you think of something that takes place in a small town during the summer, it's a romance, it's you know very predictable and kind of follows somewhat of a similar pattern. But this is definitely different. It tells the story of the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and James Watson, respectively. And I loved this series so much. It definitely appealed to the Sherlock fan in me. I love that TV show endlessly. And I loved getting to see more of not the characters, but their descendants. And the characters in this book definitely had similar dynamics to the characters in the TV show. My favorite is without a doubt the third book. The fourth book is coming out in March of 2019. But these books are very fast moving. They're very easy to get through and they move so, so quickly. I read all three of them in the span of two or three days. So that tells you how fast they move. They were so much fun. Very adventurous full of mystery but not like that heavy mystery that often comes with thriller and horror books. These books were just so much fun to read and I loved trying to solve the mystery on my own and then having everything revealed at the end. It was awesome. They were great and these would be perfect beach reads and this would be a perfect contemporary summer series. And the next book I have is Once and for All by Sarah Dessen which I actually read last summer and loved so so much. This tells the story of a girl who works at her mom's wedding planning business and she spends her summers helping her mom coordinating different events and then a new intern enters the business and he's kind of the complete opposite of Luna but they are of course drawn to each other and this book is definitely another one that balances very fluffy and very cute with more substance and more meaning because there are little flashbacks between now and Luna's past that add a different element and another layer to this book's plot and I loved that aspect of it and how it contributed to this 
this book being more than just a fluffy and cheesy book because it definitely had that and that was a huge component of the plot but it was more than that it wasn't just cheesy or predictable or cliche like a lot of Sarah Dessen's books are it had another element to it that made it a lot more complex and again beautiful summary cover Sarah Dessen's writing is just perfectly fit for the summer and is perfectly fit for the lazy days the relaxed reading and then the next book I'm recommending today is Eliza and her monsters by Francesca Zappia Zappia I don't know how to pronounce her last name but this is another one that has to do with fandoms I'm actually considering making a whole video about books that deal with fandoms so let me know down in the comments if you'd be interested in that but anyway this is about a girl Eliza obviously why do I need to look who writes this webcomic called Monstrous Sea. She's anonymous so nobody knows that she's the writer of this webcomic. It's just something that she does in her spare time and sort of deals with behind the scenes. And then she discovers that there's a new boy at her school who's actually the most famous fan fiction writer of her stories. So it's a very interesting dynamic between the two of them. We know the boy's identity from the beginning and he's very open about his involvement in the Monstrous Sea fandom but Eliza isn't ready to reveal her identity yet and I loved this book because it has such an incredible portrayal of social anxiety which is something that I can very much relate to. It wasn't like Turtles All the Way Down where it was very hard to read for me personally just because it hit so close to home. It was very light and very well done in that way and it was kind of a refreshing experience. I don't know, it's hard to explain but I thought the social anxiety representation in this book wasn't overbearing and I think that was really cool and the romance in this book was awesome. Looking for something that deals with mental illness a little bit then this is definitely the way to go. And then the final book on my list of summer contemporaries is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Alwartali. I mean you can't really go wrong with Becky Alwartali's books in general but especially in the summer. This is just my favorite of the three books she's written so far. This tells the story of Molly who has had many unrequited crushes throughout her life but who is so scared of rejection because she deals with body image issues so she never has the courage to go up to the boys she likes or to approach the people she's had crushes on in any way. And then her twin sister Cassie meets this girl who she starts dating and so she's no longer as present in Molly's life as she always was and so Molly finds herself very lonely and needing people to open up to. And then Molly comes into contact with two different boys, Will and Reed, both of whom she feels like she could see herself with potentially. I love this book so much. I have never related to a character as much as I have related to Molly. I loved getting to hear her story and seeing everything in this book play out. This book is so cute. It's so much fun. It's very light and fluffy as Becky Albertalli's books tend to be, but it also is very meaningful and I love how diverse Becky's stories are, so highly, highly recommend this or any of her other books if they seem like they might be up your alley. So that is it for my summer reading book recommendations, both fantasy and contemporary. I hope you guys discovered at least one book you might be interested in picking up this summer. I loved all of these and I think they're perfect for this season, so thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Jordan. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Goodreads at Page Travels. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. It would mean a whole lot to me if you guys would subscribe and definitely let me know down below in the comments what your favorite summer reads are and I will see you guys soon.